Hi, and welcome back to another edition of TEC Tube. Today, we're going to show you how to calculate energy savings on heat pump systems. We're going to use the Energy Star spreadsheet. If you look in the video notes, you'll be able to see the link on where you can download that for your own use if you like. So we pull up the spreadsheet. Here's what it looks like as a default. You can do one or multiple heat pumps at a time. We're just going to do one. You're going to put in your utility rate. Now you see it's pulling from an assumptions page over here, which is fine. But I'm going to override it and put in what I want because uh, I'm actually going to look at my utility bills. And if you guys have watched any of our other videos on this kind of subject, you realize we're probably paying about 14 and a half cents here in Illinois uh, if you factor in distribution, taxes, and fees and all that. I'm paying seven and a half cents for my actual electricity, but it's 14 and a half when you factor everything in. Um, I'm going to pick my geographic location so it gets the right uh, heating and cooling degree hours. So let's pick Illinois, Chicago, which is where I'm at right now. And then I have the choice here. I can look at uh, one system versus the other system. So I'm going to leave this one here at the default, uh, which is a 7.7 .7, uh, HSPF. That's the heating energy efficiency rating and 13 SEER, which is the cooling energy efficiency rating. As you know, heat pump does both heating and cooling. Uh, so that's probably what you're going to be replacing in existing homes today. And I'm going to compare that to the legal minimum, which is 18.2 and 14. And this one has a no program stat. That one has a programmable stat. And you can change those if you want. The cost, I'm going to leave them what they are. I have no idea what things really cost when a homeowner buys something, but I'm just going to leave it that way for the default for right now. So you just do that little bit of information in that uh, orange section, and it'll spit out your answer here in the green section. So here's my regular system, and here's my new proposed system. Um, you notice it didn't really uh, ask me if I wanted an Energy Star, but it's listing it that way because it's assuming you're going to do this for Energy Star. So I did not put an Energy Star system in in this example. Um, I'm going to do that in a second, um, but this is what it's showing you here. So it's going to save me $423 a year over the life cycle cost, which for the assumptions, if you go look at the assumptions page, you'll see that it's making a 12 year life cycle calculation. It's going to save me almost $4,000 a year for this particular customer. That's a 2.4 year payback. I could go in and put a more efficient system in. Um, let's do 11 HSPF and 16 SEER. I don't know what that costs, but let's just say it costs $1,000 more, just for argument's sake. And these are both three tons in this example as well. So now it's going to save me $782 to make this upgrade. It's going to be a 2.6 year payback. And we can keep changing and looking at other examples. Let's say I put in that basic system, the code legal minimum system, which was 8.2 and 14 SEER. And I compare that to the most efficient thing that I possibly can find, which in this case is our variable speed inverter with 76 stages. And I don't know what that's going to cost somebody either, but I'm going to make up a number of $9,000. And when I look at that, now I'm going to save $873 a year. $8,100 or $8,200 over the life cost. And assuming I guessed at these costs correctly, these installed costs, 2.6 year payback. So you can kind of rip through that with different examples that you want to see and get some pretty quick calculations that way. Uh, you can also get a little bit more detail down here if you want to look at KWH or CO2 emissions or anything like that. But the green part, the dollars, is what most people are mostly, most people are mostly interested in. The other thing I want to show you while we're on this discussion it's this little calculator that we have, and you're welcome to this as well. We can send it to you. Uh, if you're comparing different fuel sources, a lot of times we don't look at this kind of thing because if somebody has a gas furnace or a gas boiler, we already know natural gas is the least expensive way to heat in this market. So we're going to go ahead and just keep using that. But when it comes to something like electric resistance heat, now a discussion needs to be had. So this is kind of the default. This spreadsheet actually comes from Penn State. I'm a, I'm a University of Illinois guy, not a Penn State guy, but I like free stuff, and this is their spreadsheet. Um, I don't know what the cost of lending these things are. I don't know how much kerosene or wood pellets cost or anything like that. But I do know what it costs me for natural gas here in Chicagoland. It's about 70 cents a therm when I once again take in the cost of the gas, the delivery charge, and the uh, taxes and fees. So I can punch that in. And electricity, about 14 and a half cents. So I'll plug those in on here. Once again, all fees included, taxes, distribution charge, the actual electricity. Uh, and then you can also change the efficiency of something. But if I look at a 95% efficient boiler, 
versus a 100% efficient electric resistance heat, it's costing me $7 versus $42 for every million BTUs. It's dramatically less expensive to use gas versus electric resistance heat. Propane, I don't know what that costs either, but if it's two bucks, if it's $1.50, if it's $2.50, doesn't matter which one of those I pick, it's still not gonna be able to catch up to natural gas in terms of cost. Uh, let's put in a buck 80. Oops. Buck 80. All right. So what I want you to focus on is the two electric options, electric resistance and electric heat pump. Both of them cost me 15 cents a kilowatt hour, right? And the other spreadsheet I showed you was great for comparing one heat pump to the other, but if somebody's on all electric, electric resistance heat, and they do not have a heat pump today, they have electric resistance and an air conditioner, you have to get them on a heat pump. You absolutely have to do it. Because if you look here, $42 for every million BTUs, $10 for every million BTUs, right? Because electric resistance is 100% efficient. It's perfect, right? But a heat pump is 400% efficient because a heat pump doesn't make any heat. Natural gas, propane, electric resistance, almost everything on this list, I'm gonna take a fuel and I'm gonna convert it into heat. But a heat pump doesn't do that. A heat pump does not convert the fuel into heat. A heat pump uses the fuel, electricity, to move heat from outside to inside. So I don't have to pay to make the heat, I only have to pay to move the heat. Therefore, it's significantly more efficient than 100%. It's the only thing on this chart that's more than 100%, by the way. So that's why I'm able to have this thing be so much less expensive. So if they have electric heat, definitely get them on a heat pump. If they have propane, even with a good rate of $1.50 a gallon, which is really cheap for propane in this area, $17 versus $10 for every million BTUs. Oops, excuse me, $17 for every $10 for a million BTUs. It's still less expensive. So they have electric heat, get them on heat pump. They have propane, probably get them on a dual fuel system with a heat pump. If they have natural gas, probably no reason to have a conversation about a heat pump at all in this market where I'm at in the Northern Illinois area. So hopefully between that discussion and the heat pump savings calculator, you'll be more prepared to discuss with your customers how much energy they might save by switching over to a heat pump or switching over to a more efficient heat pump. Thank you guys for your time and watch some of our other videos on energy saving calcs for boilers, furnaces, AC, and all that great stuff. Thank you.